What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my ultimate day trading strategy. This can be applied to stocks and options, although you will get the most benefit out of it and the most leverage if you're playing it with options. I will explain both in this video, so don't worry. Also, you will need an advanced platform, preferably where you could do your charting and your trading on the same platform like Thinkorswim, uh, Interactive Brokers, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, etc. It's going to be very hard to replicate this on Robinhood, although it is possible if you have your Robinhood window and your TradingView window side by side. But trust me, you will eventually want to upgrade to one of the big boy slash big girl exchanges. So what spurred this video is I'm getting increasing number of requests about specifically this options day trade watch list that I post on the Discord every single morning. I also once in a blue moon posted on Twitter just to show you how these watch lists are formulated and how we're trading them. So for instance, today we had a 238% put on Tesla. 150% put on the triple Qs and the SPY had an 80% put. All of these were called out before market open. And by the way, if you want access to all of this, the link is in the description below. So in this video, I, I will be showing you how I set up these day trades and how you can set up these day trades as well. And let's get right into it. So here on Thinkorswim, I am using the charts tab of Thinkorswim. Now, in this charts tab, you can set this up however you like. If you want to set it up exactly like I did, just hit up that form in the description below and I will send you this for free. Also, if you're part of the Discord, you already have this posted in the promotions room in the promotions channel. However, if you want me to email you this, just leave your email below and I will email it to you absolutely free. Just use that form below. Otherwise, your chart by default is going to look like this. So you will have to do a lot of manual setting up in order to get it to look like the way that I have. Otherwise, just click on the link that I send you and it will automatically bring this up. All right, so just a quick explanation before we get into how to day trade for potentially massive profits every single day. Here's the explanation. I have the one minute chart at the top. I have the five minute chart at the bottom, same chart. I have the, what they call active trader here on the right that allows me to open up positions very quickly. And I have another chart down here for, this is for the option. So this on the left is for the, the stocks and th on the right, I paste in the option that is tied to this stock. It will make more sense in a second. All right, so if you don't have think or swim, what you will want to do is set up a five minute chart and a one minute chart stacked, find out how to do this for your platform. And you will want to add these indicators. So what I have added here, I have the nine EMA, which is the blue line. This is the nine exponential moving average. I have VWAP, which is the purple line. This is volume weighted average price. And I have the 200 day simple moving average, which is in green. I also have the volume here, but that is by default. And I don't look at any other indicators when I day trade. I literally don't. And this might come as a surprise to you if you're a newbie, but for those who know how to day trade, you know that you, your chart doesn't need to be full of all of these complex indicators for you to day trade. All you're really looking for is levels and you are confirming that by the moving average crossovers. All right, so let's look at this Tesla trade. For instance, this one where we made 238%. How did I know what the level on Tesla was. So basically this says if Tesla falls below 846, then we're buying the 830 put. Now keep in mind, you can also do this with buying and shorting stocks. As I said, you don't have to know how to trade options. However, you are going to need a lot more money to make a significant amount of gains. So for instance, if Tesla dropped $50 like it did today, for every one share, you're only making 50 bucks, meaning you have to buy a ton of shares of Tesla or short a ton of shares of Tesla in this case, for that to even make a dent in your portfolio. With options, you have the leverage that allows you to put up a small capital commitment to make a lot of money. So in this case, we bought the 830 put for $709 and we made 2,400 bucks. And that's just off one contract. Imagine how many shares you would have to short in order to make $2,400 if the move in the stock was, was 50 bucks. You would need to short 48 shares of Tesla, which has a capital commitment of around $40,000, right? So there you go. That, now you see the difference between options and stocks and when you day trade and how much capital commitment it requires uh, to make a lucrative amount from, from stocks. And options yet have the bad rep 
right? Because people don't understand them. However, when you are buying a put, and I'll go through this, when you're buying a put or even when you're buying a call, the max you can lose is the amount of money that you spent for that call or that put. How did I determine this level here, this 846 level? And how did I determine that I was going to buy the 830 put? So this all comes back to basic technical analysis. And I did a whole free video here on YouTube on how to do technical analysis. You will find that video here. And all you need is really a, ba a basic understanding of technical analysis. But especially during volatile environments, when you see a pre-market run-up, and in thinkorswim, pre-market is denoted by this gray area here, right? So this is what this is after hours, after the dotted line is pre-market. This is after hours the previous day, after the dotted line is pre-market for that day. When during volatile environments, like the one we are in at the time of this recording, when you see these massive run-ups, these tend to what we call flush. Flush is when you have a pre-market run-up and basically the, the pre-market seller or the pre-market traders, which is usually the smart money, start dumping on the retail traders because once the market opens, that's when most retail traders get in because most retail traders, for some reason, don't give themselves access to all of the resources and tools and so they don't trade pre-market, right? So all of the smart money that, that ran this stock up, they now start selling at market open to the dumb money. Sorry to say that that, that is the term that is used on, on Wall Street. And you can see this with the triple Qs, which is the ETF that tracks the, the NASDAQ, same exact thing. Had a nice massive run up. Because we're in a volatile environment, you see the, this flush here. How did we determine this level two on the triple Qs? How did we determine the level on the SPY, which is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500? Same thing. This all goes back to just basic support and resistance. And you will learn that in that video here, but I'll talk a little bit about it. So when I'm looking at the one minute chart uh, on the uh, pre-market, you could see that there is a support level all the way up until very near where the market opens. And if we really want to be detailed about this, this looks like a descending triangle, right? I just did not draw out the, the rest of it, but you can see here, this is a descending triangle, which is bearish. So we're waiting for a break and a flush below this level. Now, you can confirm this, double confirm this, when the nine EMA, which is the blue line, crosses below the purple line, which is VWAP, that, and you see the price action going below the nine EMA, as we see here. This right here is your first bearish confirmation. And then the break below the, the support line that we drew is the second. So in this case, you would buy, either either you would short the stock outright if you're not playing options, right? In this case, you would just go to Tesla and short however many stocks you want. You just click the sell button first as opposed to clicking the buy button. Or you would go to your options chain. And the reason that we picked the 830 put, and by the way, we when we're day trading, we're only trading options that expire that week, right? Because they are the cheapest and the ones that give us the biggest moves when it moves in our direction. So the reason that we bought the 830, oh wow, these went up 356% today. I should have held. I closed that at 230 something. But the reason that we bought the 830 was because you buy the put that is below the level that you are eyeing. So in this case, the level we are eyeing is 846 and the put that we bought is the 830. So not only is it below 846, but then the second thing that I look for is what is the one that has the most volume? Because the options that have the most volume tend to have the most narrow bid ask spreads, which is a good thing. You don't want a wide bid ask spread. You want a narrow bid ask spread and you want a very liquid option that allows you to close things quickly. If there's an option that is illiquid, the bid ask spread is usually very wide, meaning the price that buyers want to buy it for and the price that sellers want to sell it for is usually very wide. So as a buyer of that option, you get shafted because buyers want to buy it for the least amount, but sellers want to sell it for the highest amount, right? So you're usually buying it very high and selling it lower if you are just looking at the bid ask spread and the stock doesn't make a move, right? Also, you want to be able to close your position quickly. So that is why below that 846 level, the 830 option was the next one down that had the most volume. You can see here 16,000 traded today. Another thing to note is that I am waiting for the close of a candle on the five minute below the level that I drew. And the more volatile the times are, the more 
that that, that I use this strategy. When it's not a very volatile market, you can actually trade off of the one minute and scalp very nicely. In this case, whether you traded off the one minute or the five minute worked out, but usually on the one minute, we are getting very faked out during times of high volatility. So in this case, I, I will wait for the candle close below the level that I'm looking at before I jump in a put or short it. In, in this case, I'm only playing uh, puts and calls. I'm not shorting outright. But again, if you only trade stocks and not options, just know that this strategy is the exact same. You would just need a lot more money to make a significant gain. Same thing. Let's look at the triple Qs. How did I determine this level? And it, maybe it might help if I remove these lines and redraw them for you. Um, because I did send this out, like I said, before market opened, before all of this action played out. And you can see that in, in the Discord, the time that I sent it out was 6.23 a.m. West Coast time, right? So this is before 6.30 a.m., which is when, when the market opens. So I wait until the very last minute. That is when I draw my levels. If you, draw, if you wake up too early, like if you woke up, you know, at 5 a.m. and drew your levels and traded based off of that, um, you would not have the most information. So I'm trying to get the most information possible by market open. So in this case, same thing. You have this rise up here and then there is this descending triangle pattern form. But again, you don't even have to draw the descending triangle. You could just eyeball where the volume is. I mean, sorry, where the support is, right? Which you see right here. So I'm looking for a candle close below this level and I'm looking for a 9 EMA crossing below VWAP. Now, when the 9 EMA crosses below, you might be thinking to yourself, why do I have the 200 MA up here? When the 9 EMA crosses below the 200, that is even further confirmation. But I'm not looking to make the move there. That is usually too late. I just keep this up for confirmation. Um, you know, maybe taking profit if I'm looking to take profit, right? So if the QQQ starts dropping and I'm like, oh man, when, when should I start taking profit? What is, what if this thing runs up again? Well, once it crosses, once a nine EMA crosses below the 200, then I consider myself in the safe zone to keep holding that position or at least partially hold that position um, until <clears throat> we could see if there is a reversal back above the 200 MA or we continue to flush downward like, like we did today. Now, one thing that I find very helpful is partially taking profits. So if you opened 10 contracts, let's just say, and you get a flush like this on the triple Qs or whatever it is that you're trading, it, it you know, your impulse is to either close your position out entirely for profit or you know, if if it starts uh, and you might be closing it out too early, if if it starts to level out and you're like, oh man, this is you know, I, I don't want to lose on this position, so I'm gonna t exit out my whole position here. What I find helps a lot is partially exiting out your position. So if you bought ten puts on the QQQ, um, and you start seeing this sort of support level form here, well, you might close out five of them and keep five running because even if you kept two running, right? Just the psychological game of visually seeing a runner, something that, that's going on for hundreds of percentage points, even if it's just a couple of contracts, will soothe your monkey brain, right? As opposed to not having any contracts at all and looking back and realizing, oh man, I could have made 200% on this play, but I only made 80% only, you know what I mean? But... I find that that really helps is taking partial profits along the way. So, you know, once the queues start dropping below and it starts leveling out and you see a bunch of these green candles and you're like, oh man, I don't want this to pop up and completely erase my gains. Well, you can then just partially take profits on half of your position, most of your position, uh, less than half of your position. This really will be tailored according to your risk tolerance. I guess I should say that in Thinkorswim, here's a trick. If you wanted to... Uh, send an option to Active Trader. You can easily right click on it, send it to, in my case, Active Trader set up with the blue. Uh, maybe I should move my head. You see it there? Uh, Active Trader, as you can see here, is set up with the blue color, right? I have a link to the blue color. So anything I send to blue, you will see it here. So right now in this Active Trader, this is the put that, that I just sent there. This isn't the QQQs. ETF. This is actually the put. So, you know, I can uh, click on the limit order that I want. I can click the amount that I want. Let's just say I want to buy 10 contracts and the limit order that I want to buy it at, I could just click and 
it will buy it immediately if the limit order is hit. Same thing on the sell side, if I have a position and I wanna sell it, I could just click the limit order price that I want to sell the put at. But that's a, that is how you get your put here. All right, so that was an explanation of how to play the put side or the short side, depending on if you're using options or stocks. Basically drawing the level if it gets flushed below the level and you have confirmation of the nine EMA crossing below VWAP, that is the time to buy puts or short. Now, if you aren't playing pre-market, you could still utilize this similar strategy. So let's take a look here at the QQQs back on this day when it found double bottom support. Now, obviously it helps to know basic technical analysis that a double bottom is a potentially bullish breakout reversal pattern, right? So you would know that if you knew, that, if you knew how to read technical analysis patterns, but until you get your aptitude up, if you're not there yet, simply you can look at the nine EMA crossing above VWAP and you can buy calls, or if you're not playing options, you could buy the stock there. Now, in terms of what calls to buy, again, you would make it basically a call that's above the level that you're looking at. In this case, the QQQs at this time were around 329. So I'm just guessing that the 330s are very liquid, liquid because when it comes to liquid options like the SPY, the QQQ, Tesla, heavily traded options and stocks, usually the round numbers have a ton of volume. So the 330 QQQ calls are gonna have more volume than the 331 or 332. And you could see that here if you look at the option chain and you look at the ones that have whole numbers, like the 330 call on the QQQ, you could see the volume is 64,000. The 331 has 34,000, 332 has 31,000. But then the minute that you get to 335, automatically the volume starts picking up again. So the 334s were 24, the 335 are 36,000. So that is not always the case, but that is often the case, right? That the whole numbers, the, the ones that end in five and zero, those are the ones that usually tend to have more volume. So because this level here where nine EMA crosses above VWAP is 329, I would then buy the 330 calls and you know wait for those or wait for the price to run up. And as long as the price is above the nine EMA after this cross, then you know that it is, uh, you would stay in the position. Now, when to exit the position, this is going to be very tricky. A lot of scalpers really just have very strict requ requirements that if they're up 10% or 15%, they'll take profits regardless because they want to ensure that they make that consistently. However, again, if you know how to read a chart, you could see that the price is starting to level off here as it hits the 200-day moving average and the 9 EMA is getting rejected at the 200-day moving average, which is why the 200-day moving average is here because it's the last point of confirmation. Then you can start thinking about selling your position. And again, having something like Active Trader here on the right is so helpful because if you were just trading the stock, you would put in QQQ and you could just buy the stock by whatever amount you want whenever or sell it at market whenever or you can use the active trader columns here for limit orders anyway traders again if you want access to all of our trades all of our daily uh, watch lists our hedges options long term short term crypto etc link is in the description below we have a bunch of bots that we set up as well that will help guide you and and find lucrative setups we have coaches that help beginners with fundamental analysis, technical analysis, crypto trading, etc. It's really a great community. Come be a part of it. Also, if you want my day trading template and you're on Thinkorswim, all you have to do, leave your email below. I will send it to you for free, my friends. And if you're not on Thinkorswim, try to replicate the setup that, that I have here with the one minute chart at the top, five minute chart at the bottom, and some sort of active trader like this that allows you to enter the contract. Anyway, traders, leave a thumbs up if you get anything out of this video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know that this benefited you or not. If you have any questions too, I will answer. I will answer them down below. But yeah, this is how we come up with these extremely lucrative day trades, especially trading short term options that expire at the end of the week. As I said, here are the gains that we had from today. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.